गाइस फॉलो मी ऑन इंस्टाग्राम टू नेवर एवर मिस एनी ऑफ माय क्रेजी अपडेट्स हाय गाइस एंड वेलकम टू अनदर व्लॉग आई एम ड्राइविंग दिस दिस इज द लग्जरी एक्सपोर्ट फ्रॉम द यूएस executive sedan 300h well that is the full form of lexus and es this is the lexus es 300h which you can say is the camry from nexa because of course the camry is the original and this is the premium version of the camry the camry comes from arena this one comes from nexa jokes aside we know it is underpinned by the tngak platform which also underpins the camry but lexus likes to call it as the global architecture k well it's the same thing it's the same car with cosmetic changes but anyways there are a lot of interesting bits about this car straight away we are going to be opening the engine bay of this beautiful looking toyota no no lexus anyways it gets hydraulic struts it gets active engine mounts as well and you can see the engine is shut at the moment because although the car is on it is on hybrid mode so the engine turned to shut off i mean decided to shut itself off you can see the lexus logo looks really nice there is insulation right there and the best bit about this car is it's actually the face lifted model but you can't even realize anything has been changed but there are a few changes first and foremost the spindle grill gets this l shape which kind of you know looks like the lexus logo but the lexus logo is slightly different but you can see this l shape everywhere in fact it gets this blue tinge because this is obviously a hybrid you get front parking sensors towing hook on both the sides and the lights get slight revisions on the inside the elements have been changed these are three i by led headlights okay you can see those three elements on the inside they also get the cornering function this is the drl sort of a z shaped unit and of course it gets my favorite feature headlight washer it only sprays it once though when you turn off the car and when you turn it on next time it does it for the first time and i think after 10 times when you use the wiper fluid then only it actually sprays so it's a little complex in that regard well that's the same with almost every car you get chrome element here you can get the you, i mean you can see the parking sensors here of course meanwhile the indicator does not replace the drl which means both of them work in sync which is nice it says lexus right here it's kind of cool and then sort of a reflector on the side now other than these two changes the grill as well as the light elements on the inside the wheels have also changed so these 18 inch get a new design 235 45 18 is the size of the tires and it gets performance dampers although i don't see that performance at all anywhere in this car because yes the ride is on the softer side nice lexus logo right there wheels actually look quite nice and this paint scheme is actually fantastic you won't believe it this car is almost 5 meters in length yeah it's slightly more than 4.9 meters the wheel base is almost 2.9 meters in length so yeah it's a huge car like absolutely huge and very tastefully done it says hybrid here well you really have to find that out and when you unlock the car at night or even when you come close to the car there's light which comes out from the door handles so that's kind of sweet the mirrors retract i mean you can decide all that okay this is a sort of a gloss black finish on the top and there's chrome there's chrome around the windows as well window surrounds and then you get the gloss black treatment here very tastefully done and you get a sloping roof line as well with a shark fin antenna right there so we're going to come to the rear where again things are a little interesting but everything remains more or less the same this chrome line goes all the way from here to the other side and there you can see the indicator which by the way does not seem like an led and that baleno bindi is here too because toyota and maruti suzuki are actually collaborating l shape in the brake light of course yeah lights look really very nice at night and then it says es 300h right here there's the camera which is neatly integrated the lexus logo of course says lexus there and you get chrome here along with reflector rear parking sensors there's a sort of a spoiler treatment which is integrated and faisal khan's fingers of truth are not happy when they do not find any exhaust where is the exhaust of the car well it seems to be underneath somewhere here that is the exhaust and there should be one on the other side no there isn't well yeah it's kind of vanished but there's a towing hook right there anyways this is a beautiful looking car in fact there is a high mounted stop lamp here the boot opens in a million ways okay you can simply click a button right here to open the boot and there it is a power tailgate it opens it also gets hands free trunk which means that if you come with the key and stand behind it will automatically open and you can obviously use the key of the car to open the boot by pressing this button yeah this is to unlock the car this is to lock the car you can see the key says lexus on it the key could be more adventurous this is the logo now the thing is yesterday the bootlet stopped working completely that's the reason my camera bag is still lying there okay now i'll tell you the issue in a bit first and foremost let's see what's underneath obviously the spare wheel will not be an alloy i'll be shocked if it is okay where is the spare wheel hello 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 
there's actually no spare wheel i think <laughs> Okay, you get the jack and all, but there is no spare wheel. I I I don't know where it's gone. You get additional number plates just in case you want to change the number plate because the front one is a bit damaged, which I can notice, and I'll tell you why it's damaged. Okay, I mean the usual bits you get. First and foremost, okay, there's a hook here. There's another hook here. There's something of this sort here. Maybe if the fuel lid is not opening, it's to you know make sure that it opens. I think. Okay, that's a mechanical or rather a manual way of opening it. So let's just shut this. Okay, there's a button here. There's a lot of instructions written right here, which I don't want to read because most of them would be like ridiculous and won't make sense. We're just going to press this button, and there it closes. Okay, now the thing is that yesterday the boot was not opening, and I had a tough time trying to open it. Now, now there's another way of actually opening the boot manually when the power tailgate fails, and it fails a lot of times. That's the reason Google is filled with this problem, and Lexus knows it. That's why they've given another option of opening the boot. which do not work yesterday so i have to press this button okay this push button and then we shall remove the key yeah now it is in my hand and once the key is removed there's a slot right here okay i put the key inside here it's kind of a little difficult but once i do that i can twist it and there i can open the boot now this is something i didn't know about till today morning when the lexus person actually came the technician came to help me retrieve my camera bag but now that's kind of sorted for me i am just going to close this boot for a moment and i'll tell you another very cool thing about this car is that you know lexus knows this problem persists so what they have done is inside the glove box now they have a dedicated button you can see this button it says trunk opener so in case it fails you can use this to open the trunk <laughs> and this is to lock the glove box and the glove box is actually small in size but they've also given the obd uh, connector so that i can go and diagnose if any issue is there with the car as well glove box is kind of small but it's filled with so much stuff and i don't think it has a cooling function we'll just leave the key there for a moment so you see there are a lot of ways to open the boot in fact there is a button below the right ac vent as well now if you notice there are no adas functions on this car which is disappointing that they have not offered it because globally toyota models are actually coming with adaptive cruise control and all that stuff but here in india they decided no we shall not give you all that although this is an obnoxiously safe car if i tell you you're going to go absolutely mad this car has 12 freaking airbags yeah that's right 12 airbags i kid you not you can see srs airbag one okay there is somewhere here also it's written srs airbag you can see this srs airbag i'm just going to zoom so maybe you can read yeah srs airbag that makes it two airbags okay because obviously this is for the seat airbag okay that is for the knee airbag for the co passenger and there's an srs airbag here as well there's one for the driver so there are two so we have counted four airbags at the moment says srs airbag here now this is the curtain airbag which goes all the way till behind that's like two here as well so six plus two there so that makes it eight okay so again i'm going to count 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 10 airbags i've already counted okay yeah in fact it says airbag here as well see yes are airbag it's on both the sides of course so whatever is there on one side is there on the other side and you won't believe it it says srs airbag here as well so that's 12 freaking airbags in this car that's like crazy amount of airbags i i was shocked to know this car has 12 airbags who puts 12 airbags in a car well toyota does it or other lexus that is srs airbag there as well crazy again we are going to count two two lower two and two on these sides as well so yeah you get the drift it has got 12 freaking airbags i'm so excited to find 12 airbags in a toyota car well that's absolutely crazy it says srs airbag there as well now that the airbag thing is out of the way well i will forgive them for not offering it as functions in this car Now let's get to the rear seat. Okay, let's just open the fuel lid. There's actually a button to do it. You can't just press and open it. Nice chrome here. You get request sensors on all the doors of the car. That's kind of cool. Okay, and here you can see there's a sun blind which has to be manually used. And they've used a lot of wood, which is actually good. So you, there's this wood treatment, nicely done, and this white stitching. Lot of leather. Door pockets are not that big. You get the piano black finishing as well. And this is sort of a different kind of a wood finish. So. Absolutely crazy in terms of luxury and quality. I love it. Okay, you get this beautiful white stitch here as well. Fantastic. Okay, you have got adjustable headrest for all passengers. And this thing, I'm going to just put it up for the moment. You can see three people will be a tight fit because there's a hump in the center. Okay, first and foremost, there is not much legroom and knee room on offer, but no problem. I can press a button and push this all the way ahead. I can e uh, even move the angle of the seat, the front seat, uh, the, the, the co-passenger seat, because the driver seat cannot be operated from here. And then, 
this is all the way ahead and then you can see there is actually really good amount of space on offer under thigh support is also surprisingly very nice headroom seems adequate not really but still it's good enough even though it has a reclining roof line and this goes up goes back very fast so yeah it could have been a little bit uh, better damp there's a hook here height adjustable seat belts of course and let me shut the door it shuts with the softness things are a little soft inside this car which is actually a good thing now this thing you have to again manually recline of course yeah, i just kind of mess up it putting it back one hand operation is not the best but that is fine now she's going to put this back into place as well yeah that's kind of cool and nice you get a hook here as well now just touch the light to activate at the front no or at the rear also does it work that way doesn't seem to be working that way at the rear but at the front it definitely works that way you just want to open the door maybe the light would come no it doesn't work somehow there's a mic here for the bluetooth system and the seat is extremely comfortable air conditioning vents here there's a 12 volt charging socket and there are two usb plugs which i kind of find difficult to open you know what these are usb c's yeah that's type c at the rear and i was like why doesn't have it have a type c it doesn't have it at the front i think okay lexus here on the mats carpets whatever you want to call that overall quality of the cabin is absolutely fantastic i really love it but you know what is the usb is this center armrest because it's not an ordinary armrest obviously it has got twin cup holders but it's got so many buttons here it's kind of crazy and there's storage space here which is actually deep enough as well and then yesterday when the boot was not opening i was trying to access the boot from here yes that's right and i was like chalo camera nikal lete camera bag nikal lete so all the stuff from the bag i removed it from there and then i was trying to remove the bag but bag is a little fat and needs to go to the gym unfortunately i miss bagwati she was so slim so we just going to shut this and you can actually lock this so that children don't open it anyways if you want to call, carry longer items this is kind of useful now there's so many buttons here what are these buttons for you get heating function for the rear seats which is of course very much useless for indian conditions and these are the controls for the audio system and these are the controls for the air conditioning so you can actually operate the air conditioning from here but it's not going to work at the moment because obviously i've shut the air conditioning from the front so the front people get all the access and control for the rear and this is to open or close the sun blind yeah so the sun blind actually works in a lot of ways and it's uh, actually a work of art and kind of makes the lexus logo when it's going up or down you know on the side anyways so there's this button you see this button what is it for it's for seat recline you can recline the seat up to 8 degrees and look at that that's amazing obviously my seat i've already reclined it completely so that's again a very nice feature in fact when reclined it is so comfortable when i take it upright my head is definitely going to touch yeah because obviously uh, upright position i'll be little taller as well and then you know, maybe i sit upright like this and then my head will pop out from here unfortunately it does not get a panoramic roof which would be a very nice touch the dashboard looks very nice again but it's very similar to the older model slight changes here and there in fact the changes to this car are so minor now that i don't even know what to talk today <laughs> and there is a magazine holder here slightly scooped out nice white stitching oh my god i love this control here what we're going to do is we're going to turn off the indicator i'm just going to turn on the air conditioning so that i can show you that yeah there it has a three zone climate control air conditioning system it even says lexus here just in case you forget which car you are sitting in obviously it gets isofix child seat mounts as well and this car has these amazing headrests which are not very soft but yeah comfortable enough let's do one thing let's get to the front before that let me tell you on the way that this car also gets active noise cancellation which is something which the ford endeavor also got it basically plays low frequency sounds in reverse to cancel out low frequency sounds of course to ensure an absolute quiet climate or rather quiet cabin why am i at climate i don't know and this windshield also is slightly thicker in order to cancel noise I, i they have a word for this i kind of forget all the time and you can see the nozzles that is the nozzle for the spray which comes out to clean the windscreen and there is not much here as such like all the radar system you would expect meanwhile uh, yeah that's it let's get inside okay now there is a lot of trick here as well because first and foremost when you turn on the car the seat goes ahead the steering wheel moves around basically it is changing its position when you turn off the car because when you turn off the car the seat goes behind the steering goes inside so that there's enough space for you to get outside it says lexus right here another change on this car happens to be a slightly bigger brake pedal for better stability apparently but the earlier one was slightly smaller you get a proper dead pedal here this is to open the hood of the vehicle and this is the other way of opening the boot how many ways to open the boot lexus is like yes we have plenty <laughs> this is to open the fuel lid there's a small storage here 
Okay, this button is for the heads up display. Press this button, the heads up display obviously turns on. And the door pockets are actually small at the front. You get this piano black finishing. These are the controls for the power windows. Now, the thing is that all the windows roll down automatically, like one touch and one touch up and down. However, the small problem is that with the key, you cannot open any of the windows. Okay, these are the controls for the outside rear view mirror adjustment. I'm just going to shut the outside rear view mirror because I can. Okay, now you get memory seats and this memory not only remembers the position of the seat, but also of the steering wheel. So here I just set it to one. As soon as I press it to one, you can see the seat is moving. And the thing is first the seat moves and then you see the steering wheel is also moving and getting into the position I saved and now the seat is moving ahead. So they kind of coordinate who's going to move when and what. So that's also very nice and these are obviously the controls for the adjustment of the seats. Okay, everything is electric here, powered of course, which is kind of nice. Here it tells you the size of the tires along with what is the tire pressure you need to maintain and is amazing how the seats have been done very comfortable very nice beautiful stitching as well super duper awesome i love it in fact it doesn't really have many hard plastics like hard plastics lower down but here are hard plastics on the side which you will only recognize when you're sitting in this awkward position like i am says mark levinson here it has got a slew of speakers now this is a tweeter there's a speaker here there's a speaker here as well and then there's a speaker at the rear as well. so they have put the speaker in line close to where the occupants are going to be sitting inside the car there the engine powers up because the battery juice has kind of declined now let's get inside okay first things first i'm going to turn off the air conditioning i'm also going to move this behind because it's unnecessary all the way ahead i'm kind of feeling weird that why is the seat all the way ahead so let's put this a bit behind as well okay <laughs> i'm baffled by the number of airbags in this car there's a handle here on the driver's side which is usually not the case there's a mic placement here on the top and there is a mirror here along with a light and this obviously comes out and this is very soft like very soft and nice material i love the way lexus is like using good quality materials in their cars and here of course the same thing as well now there's this sort of a silver chrome finish and the white stitching and a lot of wood okay you can see that wood beautifully done wood on this vehicle which is very nice in fact it's on the steering wheel as well yeah you can see that it's on the steering wheel too super duper awesome and the steering wheel is adjustable both for reach as well as rake and everything is obviously powered so just shut the headlight for a moment now the headlight obviously is automatic so is the wiper automatic headlights automatic wipers paddle shifters are nice but they are very much useless because the car decides to shift gears as per its own liking it never even considers what you want to do okay this thing opens from both the sides okay there's a wireless charging pad and you have to press this button to turn it on. Now, this is decently big. In fact, it goes inside as well. Well, that's what she said. And there's a 12 volt charging socket. Now, it opens from the other side like this. So, yeah, both the driver and co-passenger can easily operate. This is just to keep your hand. This does not move. And there is some storage space here. You push this button and there another thing comes up. So, it's like multi-layered. You can put coins below and then you can put a, maybe a cup or a glass or something of that sort. Your drink can be kept there. Soft drink, of course. This is to get into EV mode. This is the auto hold function of the vehicle. And it says Lexus here. This is a trackpad, which makes this weirdish sound, but it's not very intuitive to use. This is to get into maps. This is to get into menu. And this is the back button. Again, this is finished in sort of wood, which is nice. Here, there's a cup holder. There's a phone holder as well. And you can actually remove this if you so wish. Meanwhile, there are two USB along with one aux plug right there. It says Mark Levinson here. There is a CD player, I think, which goes inside. And this is to start the ventilation function of the seats. Both the front seats get the ventilation as well as the heating function. Now, this is to retract the sun blind at the rear. But instead, you can just decide to get into reverse. And when you do that, the sun blind will automatically retract. How cool is that? And once you get out of reverse, it will automatically go up as well. So it's very smart to understand that you need to see properly when you're in reverse. Auto dimming inside your view mirror. This is touch operated. I was assuming the same to be at the rear as well. So nice and beautiful. Let's do one thing. Let's open the sunroof of the car kind of a small sunroof but brings in airy feeling like i would expect lexus to offer a bigger sunroof and you have to press it once again to actually yeah completely open it as well just shut this for a moment meanwhile uh, okay what am i searching for i was searching if there's something more interesting in this car now let's quickly talk about the changes i think this wood is new for the facelifted model along with the fact down this is a touch screen which is tilted a bit towards the driver and is also closer to the driver this is another change apart from the fact that the brake pedal is slightly bigger and it also gets Android Auto and Apple CarPlay now. So that rounds up the changes. Not many, to be honest. Hazard light button here. These are the controls for the air conditioning. This is so well done. The quality of this is absolutely stellar. 
I really like operating the air conditioning system. And then, you know, what's the best thing? The air conditioning has something. Okay, the car is shut off because it realized enough of your bullshit. I'm just going to go to sleep. So you get into climate. There's something known as Lexus Climate Concierge. When I press this button and turn it on, it automatically understands how it should cool the cabin at the front or the rear, what temperature it should set and whether it should even use the ventilated seats. It's done just that. I'm going to shut it for the moment. Yeah, that's kind of nice. In fact, if I keep the ventilated seats on and turn off the car and leave the car, it's still going to be on when I turn on the car the next time. So it remembers. It even remembers which drive mode I am in. And this is actually the drive mode selector. So here you get into sport. Press this, you get into normal. Press this, you get into eco. Yeah, it's just going to keep it in normal for the moment. Meanwhile, this is the button to turn off the traction control. So it says traction control turned off. It's a very different kind of a system, but I definitely like it. These are the buttons for the cruise control. This is for the mode for the audio system to go to a next track, to go to a previous track. This is for the volume. This is for voice commands. These are the buttons for that multi-information display. Now, this is a 7-inch screen for this instrument cluster, which is a nice unit. You know why? Because it's very easy to operate. So it's just going to come out of the traction control. Now, I've turned on navigation, so you get navigation data there as well. And there, I can get into settings, meters, and all that stuff. All the information you actually get here, that's for the cruise control. This is for the audio system and this is for the compass as well as for the navigation. But this is the most important screen. It tells me what is the distance to empty. It tells me what is the current fuel efficiency of the car. There's a blank screen for God knows what. And that is the tire pressure monitor. Now, this is the energy monitor which shows me the flow of energy. And yeah, that's about it. So yeah, all the information you actually get here. There's a tachometer here in the center and there is a speedometer, gear position indicator. Now, these two things are actually digital. The side ones are digital. The center one is not really digital. So, I mean, at least the ring is not. When you turn it off at night, you can see how this actually vanishes. So, that's sweetly done. This is the engine temperature meter and this is the fuel meter of the car. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the drive mode. And when I change the drive mode, the color also changes, which is kind of nice. Okay, yeah. Now, we're just going to... Okay, it's kind of white and normal. It's blue in eco mode and it's red in sport mode. It's a nice looking cluster, odometer, EV mode, ready is saying, I mean, it's ready to drive and all that. So very nicely done, very good looking unit. I like it. Okay, now this screen is a 12.3 inch unit. It's big enough. You get the beautiful Lexus clock, which is beautiful at night, like the way it lights up. I really love it. Okay, right now I've turned on the maps and you can see it has beautiful navigation as well. You can just pinch and zoom and stuff. And finally, touch screen is here, which is actually something which we really missed as well. Now I'm just going to get into the menu button because I've kind of shown you the maps as well. It's a simple unit. You get into audio system. Let's play an audio right away by using this physical control. <laughs> Audio quality is actually quite nice. I really like it. And then we're going to get into the menu button. In fact, I can just press the button to get into maps and straight away we are into maps as well. And then all the controls are given right there. In fact, it has this thing which pops out from below. Climate I've already shown you. Get into information which is actually very nice because it shows how the whole hybrid system is working. And then I can actually decide how I want the split screen to work. Which again is cool enough. Okay, it's showing me ventilation or heating of the seats, whether they have been turned on or off. So this split screen is a big boon. Let's get into reverse. This is the reverse parking camera. And uh, obviously it gets adaptive guidelines and you can turn on and off the guidelines as per your liking. And you can also change the view for the camera. This one is stupid. So we're just going to get into the regular one. Let me get out of reverse. And you know what the mirrors don't move around when you get into reverse, but that sun blind definitely goes back down. So that's again, very cool indeed. It's a very simple system. There's nothing complex and all, but yeah, the colors could be better. I think you can change the color. You can make it gray or something of that sort. You can get into phone. Then for the app system, now you actually need to connect to the Lexus smart device link in your phone. You have to download that app. Then only it works. Nothing much as such to browse through. Like It's not like Mercedes level fun and stuff. It's just like basic, but gets the job done. Touch sensitivity could be slightly better. I don't like it much. Okay, it has got ambient lighting. There's only one color, white color, which comes out from here. You can see that uh, sort of uh, strip. Yeah, ambient light is there, but it's white colored only and you don't have multiple colors. Well, Mercedes gives you 64 colors, my friends. Anyways, let me turn on the heads-up display. That is the heads-up display of the car. You can see it's showing me navigation data because I've obviously turned on navigation to show you that. There's a speedometer, gear position indicator. It shows you charge, eco, and power, like depending on your throttle inputs as well. It's kind of flickering right now. I don't know why. Give me a nice view of the same. Now, when you press the accelerator and brake at the same time, it tells you the same here. Yeah, that's right. 
okay accelerator pedal is pressed and then you press both of them it says okay why is it not saying it's making a puppet of me right now accelerator is pressed and then it says do not okay now i have to be in drive then only it tells me the same accelerator and brake pedals pressed simultaneously that it also tells the same thing in the heads up display and the heads up display also shows you if there's a call which is coming and all so it's kind of very advanced i really like the way the heads up display has been done in this car super duper awesome meanwhile we have to use the wipers so check the wipers out okay lights are off so the headlight washers don't work plenty of spray on offer cleans the windscreen in no time at all in fact wipers also think that the washer fluid should be good enough to put it on the sunroof as well that's the level of spray on offer but unfortunately you have to manually use this it's kind of disappointing as such so fantastic car very safe a lot of features a little bit hiccup here and there in terms of the boot opening but i have really nothing much to complain about in fact i'll tell you another cool bit like i was telling you now as soon as i uh, like okay check this okay i turn on the car the seat moves the steering wheel moves and all that stuff and then look at these three displays the lexus welcome happens on all the three screens it says es here lexus here that's so fantastic let's like next level attention to yes i will obey all the rules just continue and don't bore me right now so that's again fantastic this some 500 meters turn right onto led cd dash mcmug Yes my love I shall do that since you insist so much okay now what you're going to do is we are going to exit the car okay and uh, yeah it shows me exactly what door is open so that it's making this sound showing which exact door is open even if you open the boot it's going to show you that or the hood it's going to show you that so again very nicely done system the horn the horn is also quite nice i love the horn on this car although it kind of makes people horny if the horn is nice they want to press it again and again not the right words to use special now this is the button to turn on the car okay it says power here this is the handbrake the electric parking brake which is very much hidden and these are controls for the trip and all for the instrument cluster it has got something known as nano e x for the air conditioning system which you can see it right ahead yeah nano e x you know what the system is it basically uh, sanitizes the cabin and it uh, has some ionization effect to ensure that if there is any sort of virus or probably you know it just makes clean air and it also says that it moisturizes your face as well as your hair so i think i will not go to the beauty salon anymore i'll just sit in this car hoping that my face complexion as well as the hair just becomes better <laughs> jokes aside and here we are going to lock this and then yeah there it locks it obviously has this feature wherein you can decide if you want the car to automatically unlock when you get into park okay now we're just going to unlock the car and here okay i want to remove this sheet okay listen to this that was so satisfying lexus yahan pe na chhap gaya hai because this has been on it since such a long time now i can use it as a lexus sticker which i'm going to put on a toyota car which i have anyways it tells you the win number and all the details of the car right there as well and uh, yeah let me just shut the door soft close doors would be such a nice addition now but of course this is the es and this is not the ls but some of the features now they're like ls levels in this this car like i'm talking about the flagship not ls means low standard uh, <laughs> okay anyways let's start driving yeah all right we are all set to go which means first and foremost i'm going to turn off the air conditioning of the car turn off the ventilated seats as well bahut awaaz karte hain actually and then we have to get into this system we turn on information right here Little laggy, come on, turn it on. And here we are also going to get into the information bit, which shows me the energy monitor on the cluster as well. The energy monitor has been turned on. No traction control off for the moment. Into drive mode and just listen to the level of silence of this Lexus car. It's working on pure EV mode. Yeah, it's working on pure EV mode, so you can't hear a thing at all. It is that smooth and that refined. And because we have five out of eight bars of the battery charge at the moment, it can easily work on EV mode. And you know what? Even at part throttle, it still works on EV mode under 50 kilometers per hour. Then that's the reason Lexus doesn't. Actually, give a range as such of how much it can work on EV mode because post 50 kilometers per hour it cannot work on EV mode. Okay, that's the trick here. So, level of refinement is absolute unbelievable because the electric motor makes no sound whatsoever. Absolutely smooth and refined. Shh, don't make any noise. Okay, this is the most refined car in the segment by far. But then, obviously, we don't want to drive only on EV mode now, do we? So we are just going to stop the car in a bit. But even at the speed of 40 kilometers per hour, it is just. not even kicked in the engine yet and <laughs> you can see zero rpm for the engine engine is off that's the level of silence on offer but obviously we have to drive it into sport mode so what we are going to do we are going to come to a halt here hazard light on into sport mode traction control off as well it says trc off and we are going to go bonkers with left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator revving the motor doesn't rev yeah it does it says accelerator and brake pedal press simultaneously do not do that you can see the cluster also changed a bit and off we go
it's just a linear pull all throughout so basically in sport mode obviously it feels better because ev mode is less like active in that and eco mode obviously ev mode is very active so it usually goes on ev mode whenever it can in order to conserve fuel of course so you can see performance is okay fine it's nice actually there's that whining effect when you get full throttle and when you get into the full throttle there's that rubber band effect also because the revs hit around 5 to 6000 rpm somewhere around that and then you know the gearbox is actually trying to catch up with the revs it's just like stuck there as such now this is a very complex mechanism because this is a hybrid car so it has a 2.5 liter four cylinder petrol engine which works on the atkinson cycle which is by far the most efficient way of combustion and along with that we also have a hybrid either a battery the engine actually produces 178 ps of power and 221 newton meters of torque meanwhile this 1.6 kilowatt hour nickel hydride battery actually produces 120 ps of power and 202 newton meters of torque now you will be like isko add karte hain uske sath and the overall output should be somewhere 298 ps and 423 newton meters no 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 it doesn't work that way because the engine is not producing the peak power and torque numbers throughout the rev range obviously so they both are not producing all the peak numbers together so peak output actually turns out to be 221 horsepower in terms of the power output and for the torque well they don't even mention what is the overall combined output from the motor but it's definitely not 423 newton meters because you can't feel it that way right get on the throttle that immediate performance is obviously there which is a good thing we are actually going to get into sport mode here and this is a six step cvt it's a electronic cvt which is an ecvt which basically still has a rubber band effect when you go full throttle when you're driving on a light foot now you can't feel any of that rubber band effect it's just so smooth unbelievably refined and this is a car which should not be driven on full throttle although when you drive it on full throttle it will go from 0 to 100 km per hour in just 9 seconds although it's kind of the slowest car in the segment yeah it is very slow considering other rivals but it's not dramatic either it's just like very silent very refined now this one has a nickel hydride battery which i already mentioned in i think the us in japan and certain countries they actually offer a lithium ion battery which is obviously smaller in terms of size and is placed behind the rear seats the battery here is actually placed in the boot which kind of eats into the boot capacity and also kind of messes up the weight distribution of the car so global models have a better weight distribution resulting in better handling as well overall i would say the performance is more than enough especially when you're driving in the city it's nice and this is a car which feels so much better on part throttle when you drive it on part throttle it really excels it's just when you try to drive it on full throttle then you realize is yeah the engine is becoming noisy but it become noisy a past 4000 rpm before that it's like super if now you can hear it and it's like it gets stuck to 1 rpm and then it's like pulling 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 in fact this car will easily do 200 km per hour that is the freaking level of performance on offer but the real benefit of this car is the hybrid system it works fantastically well you can see the diagrams here how the electric motor is powering the battery but this is something the energy monitor which completely explains what this car is about the so first and foremost the engine can obviously power the wheels and the battery can also power the wheels and both of them can independently do it so there are times where just the engine is powering the front wheels or the battery is powering the front wheels and then both of them together are also powering the front wheels when you obviously are on hard on throttle as well but how does the battery get charged okay because this is not a phev right okay plug in hybrid it is a self charging hybrid so basically when you brake the wheels are charging the battery through regenerative braking and then the engine also has a generator which is able to charge the battery so basically the fuel you put in the car is also going to charge the battery but the whole system works flawlessly well you don't realize when it switches from ev to in internal combustion or vice versa it's just silent it's like really very silent it's only because of the uh, engine braking that you realize at times okay now the engine is kicked in but it's unbelievably smooth what a smooth engine is unbelievably refined and the whole experience here is so soothing In fact there are three drive modes on offer there's an eco mode which obviously dulls performance there is a normal mode which is like a comfort mode obviously there's not adaptive suspension so nothing really changes in terms of the suspension and then there's a sport mode which kind of makes things eager of course so here i'm kind of getting to a lower step or gear whatever you want to call it here it does not hold on it will upshift now the fuel efficiency of this car is absolutely bonkers claim number is i think 22.37 kilometers per liter from a car of this size is absolutely baffling to say the least but in the real world you can actually extract close to 20 km per liter which obviously depends on uh, how you drive the car the crucial thing here is how much battery charge do you keep so if the battery is charged it's going to get on ev mode even when you're in sport mode it actually gets into ev mode and the beauty of the system is that when driven sedately and all that stuff you can use the ev mode to extract 
more kilometers per liter so out on the highway it can really extend to 20 kilometers per liter comfortably but in the city you know the ev mode doesn't really work that well because obviously you don't get a chance to charge the battery with the regenerative braking and the result is the mileage would be around 12 to 13 kilometers per liter at best so it's best that you drive this car on the highway to really enjoy the evness of it but then this is a car which doesn't really enjoy the highway as much because it's not that dynamic in that regard uh, you know what with the facelift they have not made many changes to the mechanicals of this vehicle so more or less it remains how it was earlier i think the engine is slightly smoother and uh, maybe uh, you know the ride is also slightly improved but that refinement is so minor that you have to drive both the cars back to back to actually realize what is the difference between both the vehicles so get on the throttle the response is very nicely done and there's a mode in the gearbox as well for sport mode and there's an ev mode here you can dedicate it to drive the car at ev mode on ev mode that is so it's saying five bars on the battery let me just drive it steadily maybe you know step on the brakes hoping that it charges slightly more but it's not going to happen right now if i drive it on sport mode so i'm just got into eco mode and you're just going to hope that the battery charges one or two bars and then you're going to try to get on to ev mode the only thing is whenever i've tried it in front of camera it's never ever worked because obviously uh, the battery needs some time to charge but toyota's done a sorry lexus before they message me and say we are lexus we are not toyota toyota is a sister company aise matlab bolo hume theek hai so basically lexus has done a fantastic job now i and i mean everybody knows this this is a toyota camry with a lexus body period because the engines and the mechanicals are more or less the same so you can't really say that this is a different car only thing is they charge a premium for it now this car actually competes with the mercedes e class ouch it comes with the, with the i mean it competes with the bmw 5 series and the volvo s90 these are cars which are very well established of course but you know what is the advantage of a lexus first and foremost it's not very common on the road it really looks very striking and the real reason why you want to buy a lexus over maybe a mercedes or a bmw or an audi is that maintenance costs are really very low reliability is a given and that's one of the reasons why lexus has become so popular all over the world because of these factors and this is another car which will give okay i'm driving in sport mode that's something why is the battery not charging i'm like charge ho ja charge ab to ho ja beshar hum thodi to charge ho ja but no it's not getting charged only because we are going in sport mode so it's kind of in a lower i mean step you have to call it step not really a gear because it's a cvt gearbox okay here i'm going to apply brakes hopefully to be able to charge the battery a bit okay here we are and we're just going to cruise along the steering wheel of this car is actually quite nice i'm impressed by the way the steering is kind of on the responsive side it's light at lower speeds it's just easy to twirl this car is easy to drive you can see that and then doesn't feel heavy at all in fact at higher speeds also it feels very nice um, i mean feedback is that it doesn't have that last level of uh, i would say aggression or heft in terms of cornering ability but the car maintains its line very well good amount of grip on offer and then obviously when you get across a corner you realize there's so much body roll because everything is very softly sprung here now the reason i've come from inside is maybe we'll just stop again and launch it aggressively to see the performance of this vehicle because that is the real highlight this electric motor rather the hybrid system has been done so well that i'm always all praises for it which is going to come to a halt here on the right side and it's bloody hot today now we are going to get into ev mode i'm just going to press ev mode here and it's just giving me a sound is it activated yeah i think it is in ev mode at the moment has it lights off and then we can just comfortably drive it in ev mode okay yeah ev mode is activated and then says ev mode deactivated reduce acceleration to activate reduce acceleration i don't know it wants me to drive in reverse or something of that sort if this is the speed at which ev mode operates I might probably just walk and then use EV mode in my own self because that's kind of ridiculous. Like you go about ten kilometers, like oh no 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 EV mode for you today. You have been a bad boy. It's kind of disappointing. Anyways, what we're going to do is we're going to forget all this EV nonsense. Sorry, Greta Thunberg. I know I've upset you all the time, but we're going to get into sport mode. We're going to put sport for the gearbox as well. Traction control somehow turned on, so traction control off as well. And here we are, left foot on the brake. Right foot on the accelerator, hazard lights on, waiting for traffic to clear. Traffic cleared, hazard lights off, and off we go. Just one linear pull all the way throughout. This is how this car actually performs. Now the ride is actually quite nice. Things are on the softer side, of course, so it kind of wafts along, glides along. Beautifully jet suspension on this car, very comfort oriented. The problem is that <laughs> it's a very long car, but somehow it's very easy to maneuver it. And then you know, direction changes, it doesn't respond. You can see it has this cable thing. It leans right, left, and center. So body roll is in your button and say. But you know what? The ride is beautiful. The brakes are also strong enough. The only thing is, if you load more people in the car, say five people in the luggage, this car will definitely bottom out. So you have to be really careful over the worst of roads. And then I think the. 
CVT gearbox is the fly in the ointment because of which it kind of slows down in terms of in gear acceleration. So it doesn't have the same level of in gear acceleration as it rivals because of obviously yeah the CVT box which has this rubber band effect on full throttle on spare throttle that is not an issue at all. So yeah, handling neutral body roll is there ride is actually nice but because 18 inch wheels and low profile tires relatively speaking it oh that honda city is i don't know <laughs> uh, maybe planning to take off at the moment so basically what happens is that i lost the plot completely after seeing that city but yeah i was saying that uh, this car is not as quick as it should be because of the cvt box especially in gear and that is something which you realize and plus you know i'm saying fuel efficiency is very nice because obviously the electric motor is ensuring that i'm able to save fuel and, you know go higher in terms of range with the electric powertrain but the issue actually comes up when the car ages a bit and when the car ages then obviously the battery depletes and with the battery depleting the range also keeps depleting the range which the electric motor gives you so that's something which you need to consider now there are two freaking variants on offer i think there's an exquisite and there's a luxury variant on road prices 67.54 lakhs somewhere around that for the lower variant and this variant i think is 73.64 lakhs all the prices are on road mumbai you pay a considerable premium i think 20 25 lakh rupees more than the camry for the lexus just for this logo because more or less both the cars are the same and they're fantastic in that regard i know you are like this badge and that badge they always overprice their cars well they do because uh, obviously they want to reliability ke naam pe bechna chahte gaadi and that's fine because in terms of competition easy to maintain cheap on the pocket and yes a very comfortable car with a nice petrol engine and hybrid giving it better efficiency when compared to other cars in the segment petrol powered models lexus does not give us diesel options but the rivals obviously have diesel and the diesel is a diesel is a diesel is a diesel just imagine if lexus decided you know what let's make a diesel hybrid well i'll telling you i would go on a world tour in that car because it will be so cheap on the pocket as well so guys this is my vlog of the lexus es300h the facelifted model it is the same as before nothing has changed fantastic powertrain fantastic engine really well mated the whole system the refinement the smoothness the Braking is also quite nice actually yeah, a little bit of nose dive and a heavy braking but then it's not a car you really drive dynamically this is a car you are like easy going with and in that regard it absolutely excels if you like this vlog make sure to give it a thumbs up that's a like button and also subscribe to the channel ah uh, it pulls really nicely somehow at certain speeds that's like very fun but you know power will be so lean and that excitement is not there you know what oh yeah it's going to push me back in the seat it's going to surprise me silly and all that stuff so it's kind of a boring car in that regard but then most buyers are going to be seated behind and they are paying the bills for the fuel and they are happy to see all this working fantastically well and on that bombshell it's time to end thank you so much for watching bye bye